I have just finished watching Chihaya Furu for the first time, and if you've read the title, you'll know I absolutely loved it. Before watching this, I was experiencing a sort of drought with anime. Nothing was really catching my attention, and when it did, it was either seasonal or it was a rewatch of something I knew I enjoyed, like Gintama or Land of the Lustrous. Now that I'm thinking about it, the last show I watched that wasn't either of those was back at the start of 2020 with Quintessential Quintuplets, so it's been a long time since I've just sat down and binged something. That was until I watched Sung Wan's Top 5 Anime Video, where he had Shihaya Furu on his number one spot. This got me curious, since I've always seen it while browsing and the art style appeared really appealing, but for whatever reason I've never checked it out. Now, fast forward 21 days, and I suppose his passion for the show shined all the way through to me. Because not only did I start watching, but I completed the entire thing in said 21 days. I can hear the comments now. Man, that's really not a lot. I pinched all of One Piece in under a night, man. It's not that much. All you have to do is skip every other episode and watch it on two times speed. It's a lot for me, okay? Like I said, this is the first anime I've seen in a long while where I was genuinely excited for every next episode. Anyway, though, that's enough with my overly extended intro. Let's jump into why I love Chihaya Furu. <laughs> Starting off, I'll delve into the actual premise of the show, which is entirely based around a relatively niche game in Japan called Karuta. I don't want this video to be an audio rulebook though, so let's try to keep this short. Karuta, to be extremely brief, is based around memory and reflexes. There are 50 cards, each with the second parts of a poem laid out in front of two players. A reader is tasked with, well, reading out the poems corresponding to the cards in the match. Whoever touches the corresponding poem first can take that card off the field. Basically, when the first verse of the poem is read, you grab the second verse. They continue this all the way until one side is left with zero cards. That is our winner. Are you following so far? Well, uh, if you're not, you can pause here. We start and actually receive a flashback to our main character, Chihaya Ayase's childhood, which sets the groundwork for the entire show. This introduces us to the other members of our main trio, Taichi and Arata, the latter of which helped Chihaya along with the viewers understand the true appeal of the sport. When viewing from an outside perspective, all it really comes down to is two players slapping away cards before their opponents. And well, yeah, that is true, but the way it's presented is unlike anything I've ever seen. Right off the bat, you can immediately discern Madhouse and of course Yuki Suetsugu care deeply about this sport. Like, before each swing comes this impossible sense of tension which occurs while the reader is reciting each introductory poem. After what feels like an eternity, a card will eventually be read and one of the many swift duels will play out releasing said tension. This cycle of the rapid kinetic swings of Karuta followed by the paramount anticipation of the next card being read does not stop until the end of the game. Having this unique, continuous, on-edge feeling is what really hooked me on Karuta and the anime as a whole. Something I adore about Chihaya Furu is the premise of the Karuta community itself. There are roughly 10 to 20,000 competitive Karuta players in real life, but only 2,000 of them even rank above the C class, so the characters you see in tournaments, well, you'll most likely see them again. Because of this uniquely tiny community, rivalries and friendships made in the past will definitely resurface in some immensely fun matches. Alongside everyone's individual playstyle, you'll also be able to discern their personalities, emotions, hardships, and so much more, all through the game of Karuta itself. While I'm on the topic of characters still, let me just say they are some of the most lovable and endearing cast to watch on screen. Like, everyone you see has something going for them. From Chihaya's over-the-top love for the game itself, and her hilariously goofy yet real worries about her future, to Arata, who is quite soft-spoken and was even bullied as a kid for playing Karuta so seriously, yet still loves this game which his grandfather taught him all about. Every character you come across in this show is most likely connected to Karuta on an emotional level. Hardly anyone above Class C is half-heartedly playing. They're all here to win for their own reasons. With Chihaya, she finally discovered a dream of her own and even what she wants to do with her life. 
Taichi and Hanano were first pulled to the game in hopes of finding true love. As for Haruda, he has a strong desire to show the world everyone can enjoy this wonderful game. Or maybe, like in Oe's case, who just love the poems Karuta is based around. And all of that is just scratching the surface. Look at this absolutely nuts character list. This is the Karuta community I was talking about. Based on that chart, you'd probably assume the show just has a bunch of gag characters to fill in the spots. And well, yeah, there are some of those, I especially despise these guys, but mostly everyone shown has their own personal reasons for playing or just watching the sport. Oh yeah, I should mention that. You're probably wondering why I keep calling it a sport, because from what I'm showing and telling you, it really does seem like just a card game, right? And yeah, it is, but it's a card game that has evolved into something greater. They've started to call it a sports in Japan because of the crazy amount of memory and agility you require when playing at high skill levels. And truthfully, that's no joke. Most of the time when playing Karuta in a ranked format, you'll be playing tournaments. And you know what that means? Consecutive stressful matches, one after the other. You will have to memorize 50 card placements, wipe that from your memory when the game is done, and memorize 50 new placements. Let's not forget that while your brain's working overtime with the memorization, your reflexes will also have to be pushed all the way to the limits. I'm convinced the very small number of players who have actually made it to rank A in real life are actual superhumans. Like I said earlier, when competitive Karuta is being played, it will probably be in a tournament, which means the action will hardly ever stop. Tournaments are held roughly 50 times a year, and every Karuta player looks forward to one in particular, the Challenger Cup. This is a tournament which allows the female and male winners to challenge the queen or master respectively for their title. Defeating the queen has been our main character's goal ever since she found out about the competitive scene. To be the best in the world at something is a thought a younger Chihaya never would have imagined she could achieve. And, well... Cut to present day, and here she is, managing to swipe a few cards from the current queen. Now, if you've been a long-time fan of the Pokemon anime, I swear this is going somewhere, please don't leave, then you'll remember when Ash battled against Tobias, who had a quite ridiculous legendary-filled team. In every one of Tobias's matches, he steamrolled, only requiring to use his Darkrai to defeat every opponent he encountered. That is until he met Ash. Ash comes in and manages to unbelievably faint his powerhouse of a Darkrai, which made me bounce off the walls with excitement when I first witnessed that. Now, there was obviously no way Ash was going to win that battle, but damn did he look good losing. That is the exact feeling I was experiencing while watching Shinobu actually lose a few cards to Chihaya. My excitement was immeasurable, and Chihaya Furu managed to bring that childlike exhilaration back to me. And I think that's pretty damn awesome. As people age, our ability to hear higher pitches dwindles over time. This means you'll see a much larger variety of younger players in the higher ranks, which makes Harada's journey all the more hard to watch, yet still incredibly inspiring. Alright, so following this is a small spoiler section, so jump to this timecode on screen if you don't want to be spoiled. Hideo Harada is a man who was captivated by the sport in his teens and early 20s, and even once possessed the skill to become the master. Though, due to unfortunate circumstances, he was never able to participate competitively again until age 37. By this time, his skills had waned and he was nowhere near the Karuta powerhouse he once was. Because of his deteriorating joints and hearing loss, it was unlikely he'd ever slingshot back to that level, though his dream to become master never ceased. But wait! Flash forward 13 years later and his passion is now burning hotter than ever in a challenger tournament. With the power of a grizzly bear, he defeats every single one of his opponents one by one. But every match taxes him more than the last, yet his determination stays unwavering. Eventually, he's matched up against Arata, his final hurdle before challenging the throne. Throughout the match, his mind is racing yet focused, and not just because he desires to become the master. No, Harda is also here to prove it's never too late to pursue the the things you unabashedly love and achieve your dreams. His perseverance pushes him past his limits and he defeats the grandson of the former Eternal Master. And now only one thing stands in his way, current master Hisashi Suo. 
Their wildly intense battle rages on all the way until an insane luck of the draw turn. Now this scene, this was intense. I don't even know how to begin to explain the tension in this scene without you actually watching the show. But through all the waiting, through all the waiting and anticipation, unfortunately, Harda still loses and Suo retains his title of master. That's okay though, Harda's love for Karuta and his inspirational message he portrayed while playing to his absolute limits struck me, along with the hearts of everyone watching. I love this anime, not only because of everything I just mentioned, but because this show actually aided in Karuta's current popularity. I know this because Crunchyroll did this awesome post-anime interview with the producer and director, which showed a lot about how the anime was made, and even gave us some insight on their realizations about Karuta. At one of the tournaments they visited, a player lost and just collapsed while crying, which drove home to the creators of Chihaya Furu how truly important this game really is. This really reinforced the fact that they needed to create something special for this sport, and oh man, did they ever.